Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Fight Companions. It's your boy, Kevin Ferreira, a.k.a. K Money. Uh, I'm here with a special guest here today. I'm here with one of my good buddies that I haven't seen in a while. Used to train together way back when, when I was uh, a little skinnier than I am right now. And uh, I'm with my boy, Steve Eldridge. What's up, man? Not a whole lot, man. <laughs> it's been a while since uh, we've done one of these podcasts. A lot has happened since episode nine uh with liam that we had a few months back school's just been crazy it's finally winding down christmas break a lot has happened since the last show rousey knockout oh see you later (laughs) yeah holly holm the new women's bantamweight champ uh frankie edgar knocking out chad mendez this past or two weekends ago now yeah two weeks uh rosie nama hunez beating Paige van zandt goodbye Mm -hmm. Page for the most part. <laughs> See you later. Poor Dana. I know all that marketing just gone to shit. Yeah. Well, he still got Sage. He still got McGregor. It's true. Conor McGregor, the new featherweight champ of the UFC. 13 seconds. See you later. <sighs> Never expected that. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> That's I, for damn sure. I don't think. Uh, I don't think many people did. To be completely no. honest, but we'll we'll get to all that. Plus, this past weekend's uh, UFC Fight Night. Uh, Wow, RDA versus uh, Donald Cerrone for the lightweight title. But uh, before we keep we move on with uh, Steve and get to know him a little bit better, I've got a special announcement I want to put on the show. Uh, I just got my internship for next semester for uh, Mohawk College there, and it's actually at the Fight Network, so this fits quite fucking well. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Worked, Beautiful. Uh, it was awesome though. Walking into the building, it's actually an experience walking in because. Literally, it's it's like home. You walk in, and there's you'd feel right at home too. There's a there's a punching bag right in the corner, <laughs> big screen TV. They're playing uh, replays of the fights, comfy couches, and you walk in, ping pong table right on the side for anyone just to chill out. <laughs> Offices are like just cubicles, but like open, and there's fight posters everywhere. Oh, very nice, very nice. Yeah. And not just fight posters too, but like wrestling posters <laughs> and all that shit. It's awesome. But, uh, yeah, no, here with Steve Eldridge, as I said once again. And he's uh, got an upcoming lightweight title fight on February 27th for Maple City Cage Fighting 2. Yep. I believe the second card in Chatham, Kent. And uh, I just want to – let's get to know you, Steve. Let's get to know you. So how do you how, – just starting from the beginning, how do you kind of get into the sport of MMA to begin with? Well, honestly, as a kid, I've always wanted to do kickboxing. There's just never been really an outlet here for it. Um, It was coming up to my graduation for high school. My best friend, uh, he came up to me and said, Steve, uh, I've been training in in this garage with uh, a bunch of guys, you know. They're pretty good. You know, you should come out. I uh, decided, said, well, what the hell? Came out, tried it. I really adapted to the ground really well. I uh, learned a lot, took my bumps and bruises, just like anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wasn't too fond of the stand-up at the time, though, but who who the hell really likes getting punched in the face when yeah. they start? <laughs> but uh, the guys are just a great group of guys. I mean, I still talk to them now. I still train with, with most of them now. Some of them are retired. Uh, they are actually doing their own fights and winning a lot, which is great. Yeah. But uh, after that, uh, there's quite a bit of a layoff. I just trained with my brother and his best friend. Uh, we took it upon ourselves to go compete in the Jocelyn's uh, grappling competition that w- took place in Hamilton. Unfortunately, it doesn't take place anymore, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Still lots more now that we figured out everything. Grappler's Quest, Naga. Yeah, there's a lot out there, actually, oh, once you start so looking many. into it. yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're more of a, you'd say, ground fighter from the beginning, but you've developed your uh, hand skills and uh, your kickboxing skills oh, quite yeah. a bit. I believe uh, you were saying just before the podcast started that you got uh, your last win was a head kick knockout. <laughs> no, no, that was uh, back in March. Back uh, in March, that's beginning, right. That's beginning right, that's beginning that's of right. the year, yeah. 17-second okay. head kick knockout. Uh, he came in. He was about 6'5". I was told at the weigh-in, Steve, this is a... I think it's a great fight for you on the ground. I looked at the promoter, and I told him, I think it's a great fight for me all around. doesn't really matter to me. Yeah. <laughs> I was that confident, and I was that stoked just to be there. Uh, he came in. Uh, he actually didn't show up with his entire camp. I was sitting there getting my hands taped. 
he asked the rest of his camp, oh, who are you fighting? They pointed over at me. I was staring right at him. And I just put my hand up and waved <laughs> at him and gave him a nod. <laughs> and the guy just immediately went, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. He uh, kind of figured I was pretty cool and confident, and uh, that was about it. Uh, they actually, I went to go warm up, and they noticed I was wearing boxing gloves doing my warm up. And they, they started to comment on it. I just kind of laughed at him. I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll pretty much see what happens in the cage. Yeah. You can comment all you want, but that's my strategy. Yeah. No, that's awesome. So how did you develop from not being that, you know, comfortable on your feet into becoming one of those kind of guys that's good all around no matter where you go? I uh, just pretty much adapted. Uh, I did a little bit of Kempo. Uh, that's where I got my kicks and my recoil on my well, on my kicks and my knees. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, I had a lot of uh, a lot of inspiration from a lot of other fighters, and actually, one of my good friends, Rob Tomlin, uh, he worked with me a lot with my kicks and bringing it back, and just my whole just my whole stance. <laughs> uh, of course, the phone rings. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, after that, uh, pretty much just you know taking your licks uh taking uh, taking your beatings pretty much uh, any young fighter has to do that uh there's no you can, there's no way around it i mean unless you're a prodigy from the age of five and you're you're doing taekwondo and everything else which i did not have the opportunity to do mm-hmm. but uh, i just kind of developed that and then uh when uh i moved all the way across town from where i usually lived uh went to uh, redemption mma i developed more of a family there actually it was actually really good gym kind of miss it Mm -hmm. but uh i was there to help everybody out with the ground game which clearly i said that (laughs) i was way more comfortable on the ground but i developed a lot of hand skills a lot of speed just from the guys who i trained with i mean that's just how it happens you adapt you develop your style i'm very awkward sparring but i'm very technical one way or another yeah no, that's that's where we met through Redemption MMA when I started going there. Yeah, uh, just to kind of work out, and then it kind of developed into something more as uh, yep. as I kept going. But uh, yeah, no, you're uh, you're probably uh, Adam was really good to get in the ring because you knew you were gonna get hit hard. So, oh yeah. So you wanted <laughs> to get that feel, but honestly, man, you're my favorite to get in there with. To be completely honest with you, because uh, I, I got it was it was good to go in there with you because i got a good range of everything because you were one of the only ones that would strike with me but then take me down at the same time which was completely new but you kind of took me to a whole nother level in my opinion i just want to say i never got to say thank you for that no problem but man. uh yeah no it was awesome sparring with you you're one of the one of the best by far in that gym and you keep proving it time and time again through your fights oh, so man. uh i just so what would you say your fighting style is more like right now? Would you say just all around, or do you still prefer one place rather than the other? Or no, I'm more about the all around now. Uh, I'm looking at every angle possible. I'm looking for my takedowns. I'm looking for my position, looking to cut off any advantage that you have. I mean, that's just how it has to happen now. There's no one way about it. I can't just sit on my back and try to submit somebody. I can't just stand there and trade punches. I mean, if you do that all day, you're going to get hurt you're just it's gonna you're gonna wear yourself out i mean that's just the way the the mixed martial arts game works yeah so you were saying before that you were training at redemption mma now we both know that that's kind of closed down so where where are you nowadays where are you training out of in chatham uh right now i am training at chatham brazilian jiu-jitsu uh that is where i do my gi training and where i do a lot of my sparring with one of my good teammates adam gladu who is also on the card on February 27th. Um, other than that, I train. I, I try to get a lot as much as possible with everybody who I know. Um, we have open mat on Friday, so we invite pretty much all of our old time friends who train. Like we bring in uh, George Wilson, who is my original teacher. Uh, we bring in Rob Tomlin. We bring in my other camp, who I had last time too, with uh, Matt, who includes Tyler Kirk, who is a pro fighter. Uh, Matt Dawson, who is also on the card in the 135-pound title tournament. And uh, it's just really good group of guys. There's a lot of bigger guys, too, so it helps you with the pressure on the ground and everything, along with the ground and pound. Mm-hmm. And it, it also helps because you get to teach them a lot because they're newer. So, I mean, it helps your mind expand, and it just brings your confidence, brings your mental game up. It's really what it's about. Yeah. 
Rob Taubin. Yeah, I haven't heard that name in a while. <laughs> yeah. Last time I was uh, training with him, like, the last time I trained, like, ever was with him. And, man, fuck, <laughs> brutal. <laughs> he, that man's so big. Like, why? Uh-huh. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> but uh, we went, like, eight rounds, and he'd always say, oh, let's do one more. I'm like, fuck, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, uh, you, so you fought at one – so this is a whole thing now. This this is like an enti- like a really big question, but I'll try to break it down piece by piece. Yep, no problem. So you fought at 170 before. Yep. But now you're fighting at 155, and now you're fighting for the 155 pound belt. Yes. On February. Yep. Before I ask how excited you are for that, <laughs> why did you uh, why did you move from 170 to 155? Was it like a health thing, or was it just you felt like it was a better weight class for you, or uh, better weight class? I originally have always wanted to fight at 155. It's just I've never had the I've never had the training to do so. I've never had the diet plan to do so. I mean, it's not just so much a diet plan. It's just watching what I eat. Don't go crazy. Don't. Go stupid and, like, kill yourself with a diet. I mean, yeah. you can still – I'm not saying go eat pizza and burgers all the time, but, like, just know what you're eating. Eat better. Mm-hmm. Just use your head. I mean, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. No, it's it's totally valid because a lot of people don't really use their head. No, not at all. Because, I, I mean, <laughs> I eat like shit. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I don't really think about it. Then afterwards you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have ate that. Yeah. And exactly. then maybe I should actually work <laughs> out. Um, no, uh, so, man, where was I going with this? So you moved from one fifty, you moved from one seventy to one fifty five. Now you're fighting for the title. How excited, excited for you oh, are man. you about that fight? Oh my god, I can't wait. <laughs> this is exactly what I've been working towards ever since I started fighting. Uh, actually, my first fight was at one sixty because my opponent dropped out four days before my fight. Mm-hmm. I had to cut fourteen goddamn pounds. Damn. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Oh, I did it. Whatever. <laughs> Got it. And uh, fucking he caught me with the kick in the first round and uh, put me on my back. He went for the kill. I wrapped him up, choked him out in 26 seconds. That's Done. Just, yeah, that's Done. just the way that's it went. It. <laughs> Damn, son. And then after that, I had my fight with uh, Ruben in the States. Uh, yeah, that, I found out the night of that it was whoever won gets a title shot. What a way to put the pressure on me. Yeah. <laughs> no, no kidding. Yeah. And he had never been out of the first round, and he had never lost. I took him to the third. He hit me in the nose with a knee, busted me open. We went to the ground. He started beating on me, but I was still defending. But thankfully, Darren Crookshank, who was my ref, he had he obviously knew that I wasn't going to be able to take a whole lot. And yeah. plus, I couldn't see. Yeah, because of the blood. <laughs> yeah, the blood got right in my eyes. Damn. Darren Crookshank was ref in that fight. Yep, that's pretty cool. My first fight and second fight. Really, I feel honored that he was my ref. <laughs> no, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so, from the the whole weight cut thing, kind of getting away from the fight for a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, you stepped up your uh, supplement game or game as a lot as I can see. And you've you've cut like a bunch of weight, and you just looked ripped, dude. What what kind of schedule are you looking at <laughs> day by day? Because I know you work two jobs. Yeah. I know you're busy as hell. And thanks for doing this podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know you're busy as hell, and you're training all the time. So how many training sessions a week, or I, I guess a day now? Do yeah. you try to fit in, or how many do you fit in? Do you have, like, a plan? Uh, well, I go to the gym about six days a week, uh, one day of rest, pretty much. At least I try. I try as hard as I can. Yeah. I mean, with my son, two jobs, uh, my hours are all over the place. It's a little bit hard, but thankfully, because my gym is open 24 hours, four days of the week, I'm able to go really late at night or early in the morning. Right. But, That's uh awesome. Training, it's uh, pretty much three days a week. I try to get in four, maybe even two sessions. The last camp, I was doing my jujitsu and sparring before my jujitsu, and then I'd go to my other camp and train with them, and that was a uh, huge, huge advantage. I mean, there was just, I, I don't know. There's a lot more it. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, no, there's a lot more there to work with. So you train out of two gyms? Yes. Okay. What's well, the other one you train out of? Well, uh, it's just pretty much a group of guys. Like, we have Tyler Kirk, who's a pro fighter, yeah. and Matt Dawson's in that camp. We have Frank Parker, who's pretty much like the coach. He's like the father of all of us. <laughs> Not yeah. just because he's older than us, but because he, like, 
kind of takes care of us mentally. I mean, yeah. I had a couple sit downs with him and just strategic. It was, it was really it build my mental game a lot. Mm-hmm. I thanked him so much for it. And uh, it's just unbelievable. Like I never really, I was never really that close with him before, but mm-hmm. like people paint him in a bad picture, but I just, I don't understand it. Yeah. How, so how big of the, uh, cause a lot of people don't know this about mixed martial arts, but the mental game is just as big, if not more than the physical part of it. Do you take the time every once in a while just to kind of work on just kind of building that confidence and working on your mental game, make sure you're not too stressed out. You're calm, you're cool, collected. Oh, completely. Uh, just, uh, kinda have to, yeah, yeah, there's, there's no way around it. If you're not mentally prepared, you're screwed. Mm-hmm. Cause I went into my fight. I went into the weigh-ins weighed under, I could have probably made 45 if I had another six days. Damn. <laughs> uh, I weighed under. My opponent didn't show up. I didn't find out till about 11 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. I just felt that something was wrong because we haven't heard from him or anything. I just had that feeling. Then I get a message from the promoter, Thomas Armstrong. He said, Steve, you didn't show up, but we're going to find you a fight no matter what because another guy didn't show up for another 155 guy. And then we show up to the venue that day. And I end up fighting the hometown boy. Oh, no. <laughs> John Jacobs Jr. Damn. Yeah, it's okay, though. <laughs> we're, we're still buddies no matter what. Even though I won the fight, it's not a really big deal. It was just a uh, better s- strategy. I mean, there wasn't much we could develop in the time that we had. But mm-hmm. I was really mentally prepared. No matter what, I was going to come out with the win. I wasn't going to lose. It was either going to go three rounds or it was going to go to a finish. I got my, I finally got my TKO finish because I had my submission, my KO, and now my TKO. But I didn't expect the TKO, but I took mm-hmm. the advantage, put him on his back because he went for a hip toss. I cut his cut his leg off a little bit, put him on his back, took the mount. Then I just got my strikes in, hit him with one really nice right hand, and then it was just opened me up from that. Do you try to, because the way that you're talking about these fights, you're so disp- descriptive in them, and do you ever take the time to kind of visualize the fight, or is that, because I know a lot of guys don't really like visualizing the fight, because then they kind of get caught with that, oh, he's going to do this and this, and then they don't do it in the cage, and then they start freaking out because they don't know what to do, because they, well, the way they visualized it was completely opposite with what's going on. Are you one of those guys that kind of visualizes the fight beforehand, or do you try to not kind of do that just so you don't get caught in that kind of a situation? Well, during my cardio, I do a whole lot of cardio. I mean, Mm -hmm. when you're cutting 15 pounds, 15 to 20 pounds, because I walk around at 170, 75. So when you're doing that, you have a lot of time to yourself when you're doing cardio. I visualize it a lot. Like for my opponent who I thought I was going to fight, I visualized everything that I was going to do. I didn't see it going his way at all because he was underskilled, especially towards me. Don't mean to be conceited or anything, but <laughs> honestly, I didn't see that he had a whole lot for me. But this next opponent, he definitely has a lot for me. I'm not nervous about it at all. I, it's not that I visualize me winning every single time, but I visualize what he can do. Right. It's nothing I can't overcome. It's just being strategical about it. Just being prepared. Exactly. All right. That's all you can do. Yeah. Uh, speaking of your next opponent, is there? Because I know this is the amateur league right so is there really a whole lot to kind of study off the guy like for you to look at do you like is do, do they have like fights on tape all of them or because i know you can probably rewatch the last one he had mm-hmm. you're probably already watched it anyway because you were there well so. I, I was getting i was warming up getting taped up and i didn't get to see his fight but okay. the guy who did fight actually i'm pretty good friends with now I actually let him borrow one of my extra mouth guards because somehow he lost his. <laughs> so I've been I've been talking to him and he's posted his that fight quite a few times. So okay. I I've, I've watched it every time. I mean, it's just a couple things I've noticed that I can put into my game plan that I have no problem doing. I mean, it's nothing I haven't done before. Right. I fought. I I mean, I fought bigger guys. I fought at 185 too, and. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They hit pretty hard, and uh, I just di- I just don't have the height for that that weight class. <laughs> <laughs> but like my training partners hit really hard, and uh, I trained with a lot of bigger guys, so I'm not really worried about his power. It's just I got to keep I just got to keep my strategy pretty yeah. much, and just take advantage of any, any signs, yeah, any yeah. mistakes he made, any signs that I see that I've hurt him. Mm-hmm. Just kind of keep doing what I got to do. 
So uh, one of the things that I've kind of been noticing over the past few months, other than the transformation of kind of you cutting this weight and going to 155, his uh, social media game has stepped up quite a bit here, Steve. <laughs> oh, yeah, a whole new <laughs> level, I'd say. You do, uh, <laughs> you do quite a few updates, like, I think you'd say, I think I'd say like every day I see like a video from you kind of posting how things are going and yeah. stuff like that. What kind of, what kind of made you come to that decision where you wanted to step up your social media game a little bit more? I don't know. I just kind of spread my wings a little bit. Uh, figured I'd market myself, not like so much just market myself, but mm -hmm. you know, get myself out there. I took my Instagram, uh, uh, off private, uh, I have Snapchat now, whatever. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Not a whole <laughs> lot of people see that unless they added me, but that's not a big deal. Um, I fa everything from my Instagram, usually I post to my Facebook. Yeah. So everybody on there will see it too, and they'll they'll just look at it and watch it. Yeah. And that's pretty much what I want it, want to happen. Yeah. Yeah, you need to, especially like guys in the amateurs and stuff like that, you need to step up your game somehow, like social media wise, so that you get your name out there and kind of recognize a little bit more. Because there's, it seems like nowadays there's a whole lot of people that want to do this sort of line of work, I guess you'd say. Yep. <laughs> but uh, a, l a lot of them are just kind of they want to be that in that moment kind of deal, not so much in the spirit of mixed martial arts. But I know you personally, like, you're all about the spirit of mixed martial arts and fighting itself, not so much the fame, the fortune, and. Yeah everything else that might come with that side of this line of work but you know um yeah i know it's 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 good to see man uh, it's kind of thanks a lot man yeah appreciate no. that i like uh, i like seeing guys kind of stepping up and getting their name out there a little bit more that's why i wanted to do this try to help you out a little bit i don't have that much of a fall <laughs> <laughs> but uh i don't know we'll see if i can get into some other people's hands and see where we go from there no worries man um, I'll, I'll put you i'll put you on there too don't worry <laughs> I'm willing to help at anybody who helps me. That's just so, kind of the person I am. Uh, yeah. Like even in training, anybody who's lower level, I'm not, I don't mean to say it like that. Yeah, no, anybody no, no. doesn't know sense. as much. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm not gonna beat the hell out of you while yeah. we're sparring. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna tell you just a couple tips, you know, and then we'll work with it. And I'm not gonna, just gonna do it my way because my confidence. Yeah, sure, whatever. Because if I beat somebody, beat the hell out of them. Yeah, sure, my confidence goes up, but. Uh, it does it goes against my morals i mean yeah it's kind of it just makes me feel like a bad person if i beat the hell out of somebody who's <laughs> not as skilled as i am yeah. no but sometimes though they need the beating oh yeah well, i mean if they're gonna be cocky as shit yeah. just beat the fuck out of them i mean I, 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 <laughs> has I, to happen. I remember there was this one just story time now <laughs> there was this one time in particular that there was a new person that came into uh the gym and we we're rolling at this portion of the night and uh, you were rolling with this new guy. And uh, he was kind of a little squirrely. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like, he gave me a bloody nose while we were just trying to do light work in, inside the ring. And he, he was getting really kind of weird and jumpy about a couple shit. Mm -hmm. And you were rolling with him. And I guess he was stressed out. Uh, you kept telling him, like, relax, dude. It's all good. Um, I love that ringtone, by the way. I yeah. never heard that. <laughs> so that's awesome. Um, that's no. a default, man. <laughs> No, but uh, no. At this point in the night, you were, you were rolling together, and uh, I think he was trying. I think you had him in like a triangle, or something like that, and he tried to slam you. Mm -hmm. And you were like, "Nope!" And you just completely twisted him into a pretzel. And I never <laughs> laughed so hard. <laughs> it was the funniest thing I saw all night. It made my night for sure. I don't know if you remember that. Oh one, no, right? I totally remember that. That's, that's <laughs> happened quite a few times when somebody has their ego about them and they beat on the. The, un the lesser skilled guys I was the guy who was sent in Steve go fucking take care of him yeah sure not a problem take him down a notch yeah. I think that's I think that's why you were rolling with him yeah. actually because someone told you to go yeah. roll with them well it's happened more than once some people's egos just need to get, be put in check I mean that's just what happens yeah but like I've been told Steve go fucking take care of him I mean like I just watched him beat on my fucking buddy that's not gonna happen I'm not gonna let my emotions take over yeah. I'm gonna use my head and I'm going to beat him with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not literally. Yeah, no. I feel you. I feel you. So with this newfound social media game, have you uh, gained any new attention from it, like any sponsors or anything? Because I know you have uh, this one you were talking about with Fireline Strong. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they contacted me on one of my posts. Uh, I post a lot of inspirational stuff, just memes that say something, and then I put what I think I what Your it means words to me. Your behind it, yeah. I, yeah. 
and they just contact me say hey you know you want to be a team rep i said sure uh purchase some of their stuff and pretty much i give them a shout out i uh, use their hashtags uh, i have a discount code uh for fireline strong firelinestrong.com <laughs> there you go shout them out yeah uh, never let it die save 20 percent on your order yeah there we go no ease in the never <laughs> that's awesome uh all right so from that uh kind of let's get to because i know you're in the amateurs right now you got a big title fight february 27th mm -hmm. so what are your goals from mixed martial arts like do you plan on going pro and going further or is this do you just kind of want to do this as kind of like a hobby in a sense i guess you'd say no i definitely plan on taking it further mm -hmm. i want to obtain this title defend it and then i will make my decision whether i go pro or not or well i'll make the decision on the time time limit i have to go pro yeah i mean i'm only 26 i feel like i'm 30 because of this goddamn sport <laughs> like everybody who does this sport, they feel older than yeah. they should. But I'm 26. I mean, I still got a lot of time. But Dude, you're uh, young, man. That's yeah. one thing too oh, that yeah. you have such an advantage over in this sport. I think you're so good that you can go that much farther in it. So yeah. So your goal is win this title, defend it, then possibly go pro. Yes. Okay. And uh, just pretty much in between all that, you know. Gain, uh, gain some belts in jujitsu. Uh, I want to do a couple more grappling competitions. I haven't done one in so long. Yeah. I want some medals. I mean, I want some more hardware. <laughs> that's what it's. That's not what it's about. It's about the lesson. But <laughs> it's nice to get some hardware along the way too. Yeah. No. For sure. I'm excited for that title fight. I'm oh. pulling for you. Oh, a lot of people. <laughs> I, I wish I could be there, but I'm probably gonna be. Uh, probably gonna be in Hamilton. Not yeah. Really. That's <laughs> all right. No worries. Yeah. And so. Let's. We're gonna go from your story now to uh, a little bit of what happened this past weekend. I know you didn't get to. Yeah, unfortunately, I was working all night to watch the fights, and then by the time I got home, everything was done. Yeah. Do you know the results at all by what happened, or uh, did you see what happened? Well, I know from you that Cerrone got beat in the first round. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, um, that was nuts. Uh, no, I don't. I can't remember the other fights. Uh, I know Nate won unanimous. Yep, Nate yeah. won unanimous. Uh, and now he called out McGregor. He's swearing on Fox. Joe's like, "Yo, we can't do that. Yeah. You can't say that <laughs> this on Fox, man." It was the funniest. Okay, the whole. Whenever you watch Nate Diaz fight, <laughs> I feel like it's a life experience for everybody. <laughs> oh, completely. Because <laughs> you learn, you just learn so much just by watching the dude. Because so what happened in the fight was. Uh, Johnson was really good in the opening round. Mm -hmm. He was uh, he was in orthodox stance, and Diaz was in southpaw. Yeah. And uh, Johnson was just picking apart that front leg just like no other. And then out of nowhere in the second, Nate Diaz switched stances, and it was literally like a new fight. <laughs> it was crazy because like, he didn't have that front leg anymore that yeah. he could kick. So that front leg was gone. And then Diaz just started unloading his boxing, oh. started going ham. <laughs> and at one point in the second round, he he hurt he hits Johnson with this straight right and then you could see he kind of buckled him yeah. and Nate Diaz is just pointing at his face like I hurt you <laughs> I hurt you I know I did and he just kept going and then the third round was even better like he just kept doing his thing he just kept pointing at him and like doing like one of these things like where he at like hitting yeah it's like putting good his, old Stockton oh man and then the ending was fucked because because <laughs> uh, uh Johnson had uh, Diaz's back. Yeah, and it was literally like, so the the thing went off, like the horn went off. Yeah, and Nate Diaz still rolled, he still rolled while Johnson. So Johnson had Diaz's back, but Diaz grabbed his leg and put him oh. in like a half-assed arm, like leg bar mm. or uh, knee bar. Knee bar, thank you. Nice. Yeah, yeah okay. sounded like an amateur there. You're good. Knee bar, and uh, but it was like half-assed, right? So it wasn't, it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't like he was actually going through with it or anything like that, but. Still had a knee bar on him, and the ref was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so he had to slap him off, and Diaz was still laughing in his face the whole time, which is great. Oh, yeah. Classic. But uh, then Diaz afterwards. So there's three guys that called out Conor McGregor on this card. <sighs> Charles Oliveira on the prelims right, after beating. Uh, that's irrelevant. Yeah, Miles <laughs> Jury. It's like, good, okay, good well, for Miles you. Miles Jury, he's good. but yeah, He's all right. It was his first fight at 145, oh, I, nice. I believe. So Charles Oliveira's big test. Yeah. Didn't get the win. He got uh, choked out by uh, Oliveira. Which kind of expected anyway. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, Oliveira, Diaz, and then Dos Anjos at the end. Yeah. Who won in a minute oh, yeah. in one second. So, uh, 
it's a minute and one second. So um, that was that was a crazy fight in and of its own. And then Overeem knocking out. Oh yeah, Overeem. That's right. That JDS. Was the other fight. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I think that was a little bit of an early stoppage. Could have took a mm, couple shots. Yeah. But, but good, good on Overeem. I mean, yeah. Nice see him come back. It was his last fight on his uh, UFC contract too. So. Oh. So now he's yeah. coming off a win. So now he can maybe so another one. If yeah, garner Daniel, some. Yeah, if Daniel extra. wants him to. Yeah, no, for sure. And I, I mean, he's in the title picture now for sure after oh, yeah. beating JDS. And then uh, he fought the perfect fight against JDS. It was some people might say that it was reserved and kind of shitty and, and in that sense, but it was a perfect fight because he he just held his own. He didn't. He kept the distance away from JDS, yeah. and then whenever JDS tried to cut that distance, kept him at bay. He did a great job of keeping him at bay, and it was a honestly, it was a boring fight to watch. Not gonna lie, not a whole lot of action. They probably hit each other like four times in the first <laughs> round, and then in the second round, just cracked him. That left hook coming in. Yeah, Boom. I I seen the finish. Yeah, well, I mean Facebook, you see the finish all the yeah. time because everybody posts it. So <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. That's why you never order the cards. <laughs> But uh, no, RDA coming out the win, and then uh, calling out Conor McGregor, which is an interesting situation. Yeah. So McGregor now is the UFC's first hundred million dollar fighter. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Crazy. The first fighter ever to earn nine figures. <laughs> fight fight uh, deal. I think twenty million a fight now. Wow. So anytime you fight Conor, you know it's going to be a money fight. Oh yeah. Well, just like you said, right. I'll make you famous. <laughs> yeah. It's red panty night in whoever's house he's fighting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to get your opinion. Like, who do you think Connor should face off next? I mean, you can make arguments that he, uh, there should be a rematch with Jose Aldo. You could make the argument that he goes up to 155 to fight RDA, or he could fight Nate wants that fight. Yeah. So he could fight him. Nate, then fight RDA. I, I don't know who the... I'm si- I'm sick of this rematch crap. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of rematches got, oh, going on. Ronda gets a rematch. No, Ronda doesn't fucking deserve a rematch yet. <laughs> Don't fucking make Holly Holm sit on the fucking sidelines. I mean, that's bullshit. Yeah, have her fight somebody else. I mean, it is the bantamweight. There's not a whole lot of great. There's not a whole there. lot of con- contenders. Yeah, yeah. They're, n- they're not at the same level as Holm and Ronda, but don't keep giving these fucking champions or former champions rematches is like WWE. It's in the contract. Oh, you get a rematch clause. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> nice reference. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm like, sick of it. Like shit. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of rematches going, man. Yeah. You got Rousey Holmes too. Um, Velasquez Verdum too. Th- th- yeah. That's okay. Cause it's been a while. So yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, there's a lot of rematches because now there's argument that Weinman and Rockhold no. should get a rematch. And then, no. And then this Jose Aldo Conor McGregor rematch thing. No. Because that, <laughs> yeah. Don't that doesn't need to happen. No, Frankie, I think Frankie has earned his title shot. He he, he needs to fight uh Conor. I think that's a good test for Conor honestly because Frankie's got so much goddamn heart. Yeah, he's got and he puts a ton of pressure on him too stylistically. Yeah. You see uh that'd be an interesting fight for Conor McGregor fans and Frankie Edgar fans everywhere. Mm-hmm. Just cuz Chad Put such a beating on him before yeah. he got knocked out in the second round, but taking him down, you know Frankie Edgar's wrestling is superior. Oh yeah, I mean, watch his fight was Cub Swanson just murked that dude. Oh yeah, and then uh, yeah, no Frankie stylistically, and then showing his knockout power against the knockout artist and mm-hmm. Chad Mendez. Yeah, Chad with that didn't. Left Chad hook. didn't need to take that fight. Honestly, it was too 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 close between him and Connor. Yeah, too much of a risk. Yeah, yeah. should have took some a little bit more time off. Yeah, I mean, but everybody's got to eat, so. <laughs> gotta make the paycheck yeah that's true no but uh yeah no that's a good point because a lot of people don't usually take a whole lot of time off from uh from a knockout loss when they should mm-hmm. and chad didn't uh, i don't think he didn't take that much time off in between no. uh, con mcgregor and this one no not at all and now he just now he's coming off two straight losses yeah he's three for four right now in his last couple fights so yeah it's and, not very uh, good. and being chad mendez you have to fight you get the top fucking talent which sucks Unfortunately, yeah. especially off a loss, you get the top talent. Just like Hendo. Hendo didn't need to fight Vitor a third time. That was bad. I felt so bad for Hendo. I see. <laughs> I didn't even know he was fighting him. And I'm like, why? Are you kidding? Are you yeah. fucking kidding me? Like, Hendo, you don't need to fucking fight Vitor again. He's gonna fucking do the same thing. And bang, he did it again. Yeah. Well, I thought that fight would be a little bit different though, just because Vitor's coming off the TRT. True. True. So, and when but, he uh, fought Dan last, that was like. 
Yeah. Oh. Superhuman Hulk. Yeah. Vitor Belfort. Destroyed him. But, uh, but like, Hendo hasn't been the same, I'd say, since the show, the second Shogun fight. Yeah. Because his chin, just poor Hendo. Oh, he's so old, though. I love Hendo, man. Oh, me too. <laughs> he's one of the legends, man. Yes, exactly. You gotta love the dude. But, yeah, yeah no, he's, he's one of those guys where he needs to slow down quite mm-hmm. a bit. And he's got quite, a, still got quite a few fights left on his contract, too. Yeah. Well, I think. So you're, <laughs> so you're saying Frankie... McGregor next. Yeah, Frankie for, McGregor for next. Then after that, well, depending on what's next for fucking Dos Anjos, I mean. Yeah. Well. I don't know who's next in line because I, I haven't seen Pettis in a while either, so. Yeah, no, Pettis is fighting Alvarez at oh, yeah, 195, yeah. which is January 2nd. That's a good fight. Yeah. And oh, then yeah. Uh, that's on the same card as uh, Carlos Condit and. Oh, uh, Lawler. Yeah. Lawler, yeah. That'll be a nice one, too. Yeah, it's going to be a great fight. I'm, I. I love Lawler. I love that he's a champ because he's one of the veterans, and I love that he beat Hendricks. I can't stand Hendricks. <laughs> but I have to go for Condit because Condit's my fucking boy, man. I love yeah. Condit. I love his style. I think if he didn't – I think he was losing the Woodley fight, but if he didn't hurt his knee, he could have turned it around and took it from him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Condit's one of those yeah, guys, yeah. Because Condit's really smart. I mean, he took out – he's the first guy to beat Rory. So yeah, although I think well. that could have went a couple more seconds and could have went to decision, <laughs> but whatever. That's quite a few years ago. Yeah, uh, no, Lawler, Lawler's kind of gained my fan. He oh, kind of yeah. re- earned my respect as a fan from that last fight against Rory, mm-hmm. which was oh poor Rory, poor un- oh, his unreal. Nose. Well, they both got messed up in oh, that yeah. fight. Robbie's lip got oh yeah oh. cut wide open. I I don't think Lawler would have won that if it would have went the distance though. I think no, Rory, Rory, Rory was had winning him. that. Yeah, yeah. Rory was winning that on the cards for sure, and then oh, yeah. Lawler just kind of pulled it out. Mm-hmm. Crazy ass fight. Yeah, but I've, uh, I don't know if you've seen what Condit's been doing training wise. He's been kind of taking the Conor McGregor approach, which actually I want to ask you about. So I don't know if you saw this, but he's he has like a movement coach now. Oh really? Yeah. So what he does is. Um, because what he believes, like, movement-wise, is that you need a perfect balance between uh, your body. Mm-hmm. Um, Makes sense. Yeah, and he's got a movement coach. And a lot of the guys, I don't know if you've watched, but uh, I was watching the Embedded series mm-hmm. beforehand, which follows them a week before. Yeah. And um, <laughs> they were doing, like, the wackiest shit you'll ever see in your goddamn life. But honestly though like he looks great he felt great his confidence was super high yeah and then carlos con is kind of doing the same thing but it's a little bit more actually no they're about the same i was gonna say carlos is a little bit more intense but no he's kind of doing the same thing he's got like he's balancing his body on balance beams while you know the guy's throwing stuff at him and he's catching it and he's kind of staying on balance and he's jumping from one point to the other just using his tippy toes and then landing kind of like that kind of movement yeah. have you ever looked at that or even thought about like like a movement kind of regimen in any way no no not really honestly uh most movement would be like <laughs> uh sprawls uh sit outs you know front rolls back rolls shrimps side yeah. shrimps uh <laughs> pretty much that's what i think about like footwork footwork yeah no i feel like that movement thing like uh, i was watching a podcast earlier today and brendan Chubb was on and he was saying mm-hmm. How everyone was making fun of the movement coach, but guaranteed after Connor's win, everyone got a fucking movement oh, coach yeah. after Jumps that. Jumps on the bandwagon, right? And then, it, especially if Carlos wins on uh, January 2nd against oh, Lawler, yeah. everyone's going to get a movement coach. <laughs> <laughs> Which I found kind of weird, but I feel like it's just one of those movements now that's starting to. Yeah. It's, like a, it's almost like a trend, but a trend that's working <laughs> in a sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's all the way you imply it to your game, right? Yeah, it's true. I, when you you're saying you balance beans, throwing stuff at each other, like it kind of just reminds me of like old school training, like old school martial arts. Yeah, <clears throat> like stuff you see Miyagi doing to freaking Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, as far as that, not many fight cards that uh, want to talk about. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to say before uh, we kind of close the show out here. No, I think I'm pretty good. Said all I really wanted to. I mean kind of know who i am now yeah no i got your name out there no for sure oh yeah um so february 27th yep. maple city cage fighting two steve eldridge will be fighting i don't know the dude's name uh bradley dimmick bradley dimmick fuck that guy bradley dimmick <laughs> for the <laughs> inaugural maple city fighting championship uh 155 pound title uh february 27th where is it 
Uh, it is at the Chatham City Banquet Hall. I can't yeah. remember the actual name. It okay. used to be the CAW Hall. They had to change it. I don't know really know, really know why, but if you live in Chatham, you know it as the CAW Hall. It's on Merritt <laughs> <laughs> down the road from the CIBC off of uh, Richmond. Okay, and uh, you can get tickets at Gracie Baja Chatham on 9, 989 Richmond Street in Chatham, 99.1 CK. SXFM in Wallaceburg, Dynasty Martial Arts 183 Chatham Street in Blenheim, and uh, or through the fighters uh, on the event. Um, starts at 5.30, goes until 10. It should be a good night of fights, as oh, you're yeah. saying. Adam Glade, who's fighting one of your training partners, one of my good buddies too, mm-hmm. and Matt Dawson in the 135-pound tournament. Yeah, there's and also then, uh, really, really, really good woman's fight. Uh uh, she's also out of the same camp that Bradley's out of. She is a monster. She is just a short little chick, but Jesus <laughs> Christ, am I excited to see that fight. She is fighting the tattoo artist from Left Wing Tattoos. No shit. Yeah. What's her name? Is it uh, Greta? No, Carolyn. Carolyn. Oh, we, okay, wait, Carolyn. who are we talking about? Are we talking about the, 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 the little girl? The one we, that you know. The one that I know? Yeah. Uh, no, that's uh, Natalie. Natalie. Okay, okay. That, uh, I'm looking at it right here. I'm looking at the card. Yeah. Okay. 115-pound uh, fight. Yeah, that looks interesting. I saw that oh, there yeah. was a there's a couple women's fight on the card, which is always nice to see. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's harder fight. to get the women into uh, MMA, right? I don't. There's just I don't know. I don't know. There was supposed to be two fights last card. Yeah. One of them had to pull out, mm. and uh, then it ended up just being uh, Katie and Natalie. It was a really good fight. But uh, Natalie's just, oh, she's fierce. <laughs> Jesus. I've watched, I, I'm friends with her on Facebook. Yeah. I follow her on Instagram. I watch her training videos and whatnot. And Jesus, I've watched watched her. She just grappled and she won a couple medals. I can't remember what they were. I, kn- I know she got a silver and she's on, I think she's on to a higher level of grappling now to like a, like, you know what I mean? Kind of like, yeah, yeah. kind of like, uh, you get a trip to somewhere or whatever. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. yeah. You know <laughs> okay. what I mean. I, okay. <laughs> I can't I think of the words right now. Um, no, so it should be an exciting night of fights either oh, way, yeah. February 27th. Go check that out if you're in the area. Try to get some tickets. Go support Steve in the main event fighting for the title. Uh, once again, before we close the show, follow us on social media. I'm on We Have Fight Companions on Facebook, Twitter. Follow us on or subscribe to us on YouTube, rather. And... Uh, Yeah, until next time, see you guys later. Peace.